I want to talk a little bit about building your career in the industry. I think this is an area where I can um, share some of the thoughts with you to, to help you in this process. You spent a lot of time trying to figure out what college you want to go to, and you spent a lot of time um, figuring out where, where your first job is. And there's not a lot of people who spend a lot of time focusing on their career development and building that career. So what I've noticed when I've gone through uh, reviews of people that have worked for me and um, mentoring sessions and other things that I've dealt with over time is that there's a, it's really easy to see the difference of people who have done a better job preparing for this and have set out a path for the things that they want to accomplish and have goals and kind of stay on track with their manager over time to figure out, are they doing the right things? Can I get feedback? What can I do better? How do I keep preparing myself? So that's what I want to talk about today and I break it down into um, three sections. And the first is creating opportunities in your organization so you can kind of showcase who you are and the things that you bring to the table and what your capabilities are. And then I want to talk a little bit more on managing your career. And then the third part is um, adapting to change and, and how that fa affects the original goals you had set for yourself. So one of the things you absolutely need to know is you can add value and impact your organization right away. And once you do that, you know, you start to make a little bit of a name for yourself. And so I would encourage you to think about every task, every assignment you're given um, as a challenge or an opportunity for you to show those things. Um, earlier in your career, you've got a little bit more time to think about things. There aren't 50 things on your plate at once. There's just a couple. So take the benefit that you have, that luxury of having more time, and understand the things you're working on. Become you know, do your homework to understand the process, why it's being done, how does it affect the firm, and if I change it, what are the changes p potentially going to affect? You want to be a subject matter expert for the things that you're working on. And the, one of the best things you can do is figure out how to deliver solutions to these problems. If you want to get noticed in your organization, be someone who can solve problems. It is unbelievably refreshing. Um, people come in and say, well, this is a problem. It's always been a problem. This is the way we do it. But the people who come in and say, yeah, I understand it's a problem. Here's a way we should think about solving it. It makes all the difference in the world. And it's pretty simple stuff. I mean, you just take the time, figure it out, and share your ideas. And you can change things within your organization pretty quickly. And that process is one of the ways that you can differentiate yourself from your peers. It's um, something that's really well received in the senior level within any firm. And believe me, Managers talk about employees that they have that work for them that are doing great things. They want to brag about the people on their team. So you may not think that people are aware of this stuff, but it is being communicated and it's well received. You have my word on that. Um, one of the things you also need to work on, not just understanding your organization and how things work, but you also need to understand the industry. John Lothian and his team have done an unbelievable job of aggregating content and making it readily available to everybody in the industry. I've been reading the newsletter since day one, and it's a great source of information. And when there's stuff there that I don't understand, I go look it up on the internet and figure it out. I strongly encourage all of you guys to do the same thing, because it is a great way to understand what's happening. And it, your organization is going to look at you and see, are you really doing all the things you need to do to grow and be the best person, best employee that you can be? And, and the external effort to understand what's going on in the industry and ask questions about how it may impact your firm or you know, what the changes mean for the industry. It, it sends a really good message about your commitment to the firm, your commitment to the job. Um, other things like getting involved if your firm has philanthropic efforts. Sign up, participate, show that you want to be a part of the organization. You can do other things on your own. Go take your Series 7 license. You probably don't need it right away, but go take it just to say, this is something that's going to make me better over time. And as you do these things, each kind of step in this process proves your abilities and what you can bring to the firm. And it starts to build your reputation in the firm and also starts to create the, the brand of who you are. And once you do those things, you've started to establish yourself in the organization. And, one, and that transitions into the second point I want to talk about today, which is managing your career. And it is something you need to do from the start 
to the end of your career. It's always something that you need to work on. And actively managing your career means engaging with your boss and having a plan for the things that you want to accomplish. It's, it's such a simple thing. So an annual review. You come to the review prepared. Here's the things that we set out to accomplish over the year. Here's the things that I've delivered on. Here's the things we weren't able to achieve. And you know, some of it was my fault. I couldn't get it done. And some things changed and our priorities changed. But having that kind of interaction with your boss and the dialogue that creates um, the feedback you receive from it sets you on the path for continuing this growth and development in the organization. And if you invest the effort to do those things, I guarantee your boss or your boss's boss is going to invest the time and energy um, to help you along that process. So be aware of it. You also need to understand your organization. And people that go to work for a smaller firm have the opportunity to move up the ranks probably pretty quickly. If you go work for a large firm, it's you know kind of more scripted out. You've got to have X number of years of experience to get the next title. So you need to understand your organization and what the possibilities are. And you need to match those opportunities with your goals and objectives. And if it's going to take you 15 years in an organization to achieve something you want to do, you may think about that. That may not be the right shop. Do you have the patience to, to spend that time and energy to get to the level that you want to? Along this thought process of what, what's next, you need to constantly be preparing yourself for additional responsibilities in the organization. If the next step for you is to manage a small team of people, have you taken courses to help your management skills? Have you thought about, are you ready to terminate an underperformer that works for you? Are you ready to give critical feedback during the review process? You have to show your organization that you're ready to take on more, and they will reward you with those things. Um, but kind of being a self-starter a self to make these things happen um, is, is really incumbent on all of you to make those results a reality. So in order to work to achieve your career goals, it's something that you have to constantly think about. And once you identify what you want to accomplish, then you set a path for how to make those things happen in conjunction with the manager or, or a, a mentor, which is something I would strongly recommend if your organization has a mentor program, um, participate in it. If you want to um, do something more informally with someone in the industry, it's a great opportunity to use uh, this person as you know, kind of a trusted sounding board. I'm struggling dealing with my manager on this issue. I don't know how to take the next steps. What do you recommend? And you get this you know, unfiltered access to the experience that that person has had in the industry. And it may help you um, eliminate making some of those same mistakes that they have. Um, and it's just it's something I've seen work really well. And I've done it both formally and informally and had you know, great experiences with the people I interacted with. So if that's a possibility, I would encourage you to take advantage of that. And then the last stage in this process is, is you know, adapting to change. So you've heard a bunch of different stories about the industry and, and how things are, are different. So it's change in the industry, it's change within your organization, and, and it, it could be a change in your professional goals. 15 years ago, every trading firm wanted to hire the tallest person they could find to stand on the top step of the pit and flash orders to the broker. And then we got into this age of automation and quant developers were the people that everybody wanted to find. And now if you talk to the trading firms, they're looking for great legal and compliance people that can help them navigate, navigate this regulatory environment we're in. So things will change over time, and you have to understand the organization you work for. Has it changed? Is it prepared to survive in this environment we're in? Are the things they're focused on now the th same things that you signed up for when you originally took the job? And you need to have the ability to you know, kind of self-awareness, what are my professional goals? Are they still the same thing I, I started out with in the beginning of my career? Are these the things that are important to me, or do I want to do something different? And if you get to that stage, you've got to be um, prepared to make decisions. So have you created a network of contacts in the industry? Have you stayed up to date with current events and things that are happening? Um, have you done enough to prepare yourself to take the next steps? Do you feel confident about switching gears and saying, you know, this part of the industry that really interested me when I was 23 isn't quite what I expected and now I'm going to try and do something different. So 
it is a process that you have to go through. And your path may change over time, but if you've done all these steps, all the things we've talked about, you will be prepared for whatever is best for you in that uh, next stage in your career. So um, to kind of recap the things we talked about in, in terms of creating opportunities, hit the ground running. You can make a difference right away. Don't pretend that it's gonna take a year or two for you to have an impact on an organization because in, in this day and age, it's just not true. Um, in terms of managing your career and developing it, you have to be actively involved. You have to have thoughts and ideas. You have to have plans. And if you have those, then you're going to get the engagement from senior people in your organization to help you achieve those things. And then lastly, in terms of being ready to adapt um, to change in the environment, are you ready to shift gears? Have you spent enough time preparing for um, other pursuits in terms of what your interests are and, and how to manage your career from that perspective? So uh, thanks to John Lothian and, uh, and his team for putting this together. I think it's really great. Um, the opportunity, the exposure that you guys have gotten to um, some really senior people in the industry and heard great stories about how things have evolved over time. So I encourage you to drop him a quick note and thank him for the effort. And I wish all of you the best, in, in luck, best of luck while you pursue your career in the financial industry. Thank you.